Do you remember any of the names of the officers? Uh, what was it? Culbertson or... Anyway, he said he had actually dealt with Ammon. <laughs> He's like, hey man, I, when Ammon came through, I, you know, I was trying to help him too. You know, I'm trying to help you, help you. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, uh, what did he look like? Yeah, as far as, as far as, was that in the jail, this jail? Yeah, it's in this jail. So, uh, you went ahead of everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was figuring, you know, I was going to claim my right to go in. That was kind of my belief, is you got to claim your right or they're gone, but I guess this right is already gone. So just to clarify, so you, you were... <laughs> I can't get it. I tried to get it back today, but I get a feeling it's not coming back. So, so. can you, so let's summarize. So you, you were you were told to appear, right? You, you, uh, you were supposed to appear in person for your trial. They arrested you before you could get into the courthouse. Before your court trial date, they charged you with two accounts of battery, a count of re re resisting. Yes. And it charged a failure to appear. Yeah, the failure to appear came right when I was about to get released. So okay. you should have a warrant right now. Well, then they said I had to do a arraignment with the judge. So then I sat and waited for the judge to get on. So I you don't. An so you don't have a warrant for not showing up to court today. That was a twenty thousand dollar bond. So they put a warrant on that, and they said a twenty thousand dollar deal. But then I so I spoke to the judge over Zoom, and he he quashed it. He quashed it. Yeah. Do you know the judge's name? Daniel Stickle. Daniel Stickle uh, quashed it. Yeah. Is that your judge? Yeah. He had a mask on, and uh, yeah. So he quashed that, and kind of. Then he started talking about my other charges, kind of urging me to get a public defender. And then he, then I said, okay, if I decide I want one later, can I request one later? And he's just like, uh, I'm gonna sign you a backup one now, right? Or something. I don't, I don't remember his words, but I think he said backup. Stand by. Stand by. Probably. So I guess maybe I have one appointed. So, Did he ask for your income information before that? No. Huh, okay. So you're approximately in jail for, or, or arrested at 810. Do you know about what time you were released? Uh, what time is it now? I don't even know what time. Anybody know what time it is? So, Two fifty-five. So, uh, yeah, I just barely got out so five minutes ago. Okay. I, uh, let's see. I, I got to this jail about eleven. Okay. When's your next court date? I don't even know. I've been so out of it. <laughs> um, you are hereby notified that you must appear before the court clerk between May 21st and May 28th. And then I have. What, at 9 o'clock in the morning? Notice of court date. You are hereby notified that you must 2nd. appear before the judge July 2nd. 9 a.m. You are further notified that if you fail to appear, a warrant will be issued against you. Anyway, so he said that with me on the phone. Um, and he, he pretty, I told him, because he said a certain day, and I was, I was like, you know, the thing with the trial is, I don't want to have to wear a mask at the trial, and he argued with me on that, saying, "Oh, you have you have no scientific evidence or whatever." Mm -hmm. like, he's like, "What's what's your thing?" I, I said, "For health concerns and religious you know, things," and, and he's just like, "Oh, well, have you seen a doctor?" I said, "No, I don't trust the doctors. I don't go to the doctors." And he's like, uh, um, "So, what's your what's your religion?" Uh, and uh, what what's the What's the religious belief of, that's part of your religion that doesn't let you wear masks? <laughs> well, he at least asked you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. I pretty much, I just told him uh, the idea of not participating in deception. 
because I knew the mask wasn't about health, it didn't help health. So it, it was me at playing along with the deception kind of thing and, and also giving ownership of my body and soul to someone else, which I, my conscience won't allow me to do. And he did, yeah, he didn't give a crap about that. He's like, well, yeah, if you don't show me your papers, you got, you're gonna have to provide some papers. <laughs> so I said, um, I mean, I can quote, you, I can, I can give you some scriptures of my religion, you know, of why I can't wear a mask. And he's like, no, no, I don't care about that. <laughs> he didn't care about your your beliefs. He didn't want to hear about the scriptures. So I don't know what papers he's talking about. Probably medical reasons. He's talking about a medical exemption from your doctor. And if you belong to some religion where everybody in the religion agrees with you about the masks, but obviously that's not the case, right? Right. right. So he's trying to... The scripture is saying not to wear one, but people still do. So he's attempting to discredit you because other people in your religion do wear one. That's his, that's his point there. That's weird. Did you see other people not wearing a mask at, during any of this process of the arrest or the court or the jails? Yeah, several of the officers would keep their masks lower. Like the guy who drove me over, he had his mask under his nose. I'm like, hey man, I'm glad you have your mask up under your nose, and I'm cool with it if you take it all the way off, because I don't think you're you're sick. And he, he's like, yeah, if I was sick, I wouldn't have come into work today. today. And I said, same here, I wouldn't have went to court today if I was sick. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he just kind of listened to me. Most of these guys, when you talk to them, they don't want to wear the mask either. And he said, oh, well, I keep it under my nose because if, if I put it up, then I'll fog my glasses and I'll get in a car accident. So I'm like, yeah, I don't want you to crash us into something, so great. <laughs> but other officers in that area would pull it down. Some of them would even pull it all the way down for a minute while they're talking to somebody. And so they, there was a whole lot of up and down, the mask going on. They weren't keeping a too close eye on the other people in the jail clothes. Sorry. So, so some of them got away with holding, pulling it down for a little bit. But like whenever someone would new would come in, they, they would tell them, you keep your mask on or whatever. How can, sure how, can, you know mask. how can the people help you? Is there any way that people can help you in your situation? I don't know right now. I think uh, my... I thought our whole goal was to, you know, claim, use, and defend your rights, but I don't know that we have enough. If we, as a tiny little group of us, keep claiming and using and defending our rights, we're just going to get smashed. So that's kind of what our debate was at the warehouse last night. So how do we go about this? Because, you know, if we had 200 people all determined to get into that courthouse without a mask, then probably nobody would get, even get arrested. So, you know, I, I wanted to make at least one effort to claim my rights and say, you know, I called on 10 people and I saw 10 people raise their hand that would commit to get arrested. <laughs> but, I, try, I tried, yeah, but they, yeah. they had us. Well, they said you went so fast they didn't realize. They put, a, they put wow. metal up everywhere. Oh, yeah. Metal fencing. Yeah, they reinforced they everything. Yeah. Us off. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It was crazy. So I'm not mad at anybody for not. No, no, no. no. I'm just saying it, it is. It, it happened the way it's supposed to happen. Maybe. We called the marshals. I thought, called the marshals. Uh, I thought maybe ten would be enough to, you know, do at least do something. Um, but you know, Ammon was kind of doubting. You know, maybe it's not even worth it with ten because we need more like two hundred. I think there's some important so, things that has been learned here. You were arrested before entering the court, right? Right. You were arrested before your trial time in charge of the failure to appear, right? And you you weren't the aggressor. You were you were moving towards the door, the direction of the door, if you like. Right. And then you were the, you were the one charged. Yes. Yep. Marshall had been in in my way, and so I tried to go around him, and he tried to block me, and so I put, I did put my way past him. <laughs> you know, so maybe that was the first battery. I don't know what they would think the second battery was, because right after I got after, got past Bennett, they freaking tackled me to the ground. 
<laughs> I hope that I hope someone got any footage of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope mostly there's a video of him, one of the officers, slamming my head against the door with his knee, because I would like to, you know, file something against that officer. But yeah, so I'm a little confused right now. I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of depressed. I don't I don't know where to go from here. Maybe I'll just give up on this whole claim of my rights thing and just take all the plea deals and do whatever a little jail time or just say, all right, I guess we're not we're not going that route anymore. So how about sleeping on it for a day or two? <laughs> yeah, I think I need time to kind of process and figure out it. Well, where you look and see if they erased your videos. If they erased what? Thank you, guard. That'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I told the deputy to give it to me. I took your phone. I already had your paperwork. Did you hand it to me? Let's we'll see if, it, if, if it's erased. I did it up being kind of hard because I had to They would have let me check my phone for contact and use their phone to call people. But so I had no reason to have a The only person's number I know is my wife. Jessica. Smart. Smart. You've got to through gotta know one number. That's the one to know. Yeah, that's true. See, I was thinking you're wondering how long this is share this video. full of footage. I wonder how long this stayed in the recording. <laughs> See, I, I tried to get them to let me shut it off, and they wouldn't. Uh, well, it might be good, though. You might hear some things on there that uh, could really help. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking. Remember a couple weeks ago? So it appears you saw some video anyways. Oh, there's... I was thinking this one. Because they were supposed to show up and have that job. I realized that. Oh no, I'm mistaken. There's actually only four videos so on here. Die, it cuts the footage into five minute clips. Uh, I put the settings to do that. So there's four or five minute clips on here. So it's not almost full. I, I read it backwards. It's actually almost all the way up. So you're good? It's available on footage. Let's see what kind of. Yeah, it looks like the. Hit and delete. Let's see if they go all the way up to the arrest. Uh, sometime they probably hit the button and turn the recording off. See, I was trying to get them out. Yeah, that was that was that was and your cats. Ryan, what's your first name? Joe Ryan. These guys are the perpetrators violating my rights. These guys are the tyrants. It looks like you do have video in your mouth. Uh, you can hear it. Uh, yeah, I'm here for my rent. What time is it? So right now he's overlooking uh, some video he took on his uh, body cam. And this is the gentleman that was apparently had a court date because he had uh, been charged with assault when he was with Adam Bundy, <clears throat> Adam Bundy's court date, and Adam Bundy got arrested there for refusing to wear a mask to go in. And so they put a warrant out for Adam Bundy. And this is just one of the gentlemen uh, that got arrested today for standing up for his rights, not wanting to go inside a courthouse having to wear a mask. So, um, Apparently, he's feeling discouraged because not enough people uh, came in there with him. God bless you. God bless America.